So the standard method of leveling, leveling the print bed is checking the distance between the nozzle and the print bed with something like a piece of paper or a feeler gauge and you know just feeling how much friction there is between the bed and the nozzle and going to each of the leveling, leveling screws and making sure it feels like it, it bites the paper in the same amount. That's fine for printing with a 0.3 millimeter layer height, but uh, I'm going to work on printing at 0.1 millimeter layer heights, and the bed needs to be really, really level. And um, just the feeling of the paper like that is just doesn't seem to be precise enough. So instead, I want to use a uh, dial indicator, which um, it just measures how much this little plunger is pushed in. And I'd be able to get a much better reading if I could mount this to the top, to the front of the extruder, and move the extruder around and uh, see the uh, indicator change. So I'm going to design a mount to do that, and the way I'm going to hold it on is I'm going to use these um, very strong rare earth magnets, and I have two of them set so that they'll hold on to a couple of the screws on the front of the extruder. And, um, and that should actually be plenty strong enough. These are very, very strong magnets. And then um, this will be able to sit on the front, and I'll be able to watch the indicator as I uh, move the extruder around. So I'll take all the measurements I need and, um, and get it designed up. and it's ready to output as an STL. Okay, now I'll open that up in Replicator G. And it's oriented in a way that I, well, you can see it's sticking below the bed. So I'll go move, and if I put it on platform, see how most of it is up above the platform. If I printed it this way, it would need uh, support under all of that, and that would be a pain to peel all of that off. So I'm going to rotate it, or Y, there we go, and then um, put on platform again and center. This is a better orientation to print for, because there's not much of anything overhanging, although there's a matter of this notch right here. That's a 90 degree overhang and that would need some support. You can't just print them out of the middle of space like that. So I can make an adjustment rather than having to put support under it or have this be looped down. If I just make that a 45 degree chamfer then it will need support. If you, something's at a 45 degree angle the printer will be able to to handle that. So I'm going to go back in here chamfer. Look at one millimeter. Just a little bit of an angle there. I'm going to open this one up in Slicer. Slicer will process this one very quickly. And add the STL to the table. Down mount. There it is. It's a little top-down view, a little outline of the bounding box. Under print settings, I'm going to go 0.3 layer height. The skirt, with one loop, the skirt is just a little extra. It'll draw around here just to make sure the plastic is flowing through the nozzle before it starts on the print. I'm going to do four perimeters. That'll be four outlines um, around the outsides and around the holes. Uh, having, a thicker, having a thicker shell like that will give me some more room some more material to work with if I need to drill out into the holes that are a little bit bigger. I don't want to end up um, getting through into the fill. I want to make sure that that's thick enough. Solid layers 3. Um, I'm doing only 10% fill, which is pretty sparse. Um, so I've got three layers of solid layers just to make sure I can cover that, that fill. 
and the fill pattern I've got on honeycomb should be good for uh, holding up those solid layers. I like rectilinear for the solid fill pattern and burn and filament. Got the nozzle size, 0.35. It's very important. The diameter size, even though it's 1.75 filament, um, the actual measurement is about 1.65. And uh, with the slicer, slicer calculates the flow of the plastic automatically, but to do that it needs to know very precisely how wide the filament is. So this is something you want to measure with calipers and get exact reading on. And temperature uh, 175 is fairly cool. The solid doodle runs with cooler temperature readings than most other printers. Anywhere from 180, 175, 180, 195 is a, is a good temperature to go with. On perimeters I've got on print speeds I've got 50 millimeters a second on perimeters for small perimeters uh, like around the holes that are small distances, I'm going to drop that just a little slower to 30. And then infill can go faster, the solid, everything else is good for, for 50. Um, if the small perimeters, like the holes, if I had it on, on 50, because there's enough fine detail, there's enough facets around those holes, um, it can get bogged down and start stuttering and leaving blog, blobs. So that's why I like to turn small perimeters down uh, to a little slower, just to make sure it can do it more smoothly. So and save my config just to make it easier to get back those settings and uh, come back here and export G-code. I'm just going to go to the desktop for now and time out G-code. Off it goes and this is literally going to take seconds. And it's done and uh, we're ready to print. Connect and turn on monitor printer so I can see the temperatures and I'm going to set the heater and go to 175. Get the bed running at about 85, maybe 90. And here's my temperatures. My bed's already warm. I've had that already heating up. And uh, while we're waiting for the extruder to come up to temperature, I'm going to load the file and load my G code right there says it's going to take about 58 minutes for this to print. Okay, everything's up to temperature, and I just want to hit extrude a few times, and ready to hit print. Let's see how the first layer looks. I think it needs to be squished a little bit more. Pause it, drop the bed a little bit, and wait for that to pause, take this maybe another half turn, and restart. Much smoother. Just trying to get. Ah! Oh. Yeah, I should have taken care of that blob first. Pause. It's all done. Small amount of warping down in the corner on the front where it's come up from the bed just a bit, but it's nothing critical. Let the bed cool down a few degrees and comes right off. So here's the part. It's our little lip. There's the holes for the magnets, the hole for the dial gauge, which uh, it still came out undersized. The dial gauge doesn't fit through. And it is about 8.4, eight and a half or so. Um, it was supposed to be uh, 9.6, so it came out about 10% short. Uh, the hole is is about 90% of the size it was supposed to be. So I'm gonna have to drill that out three eighths and 
and these were pretty close to the right size vertically but horizontally uh, they're too small so the dimension that's correct is the dimension that's determined by the layers which isn't too hard it just has to divide um, my uh, the dimension that I wanted divided by the layer height and uh, the side to side though is affected by the same factors of thread width and the rest that um, that this hole were affected by so um, I'm going to drill these out to the right size and then uh, we'll see how it goes from there